Ooh, hello everybody, welcome back, especially after this past week events. If you guys have been following what has been going on, you know what we went through here. By that I mean me, my channel, and many of you who noticed what was happening. Anyway, <clears throat> pardon me, we are back full force. We're going to talk a little bit about Epson printers. Yes, imagine that I'm going to actually discuss Epson printers. The reason being is a lot of people are having problems, especially those lucky owners of Epson printers that live in Europe and other parts of the world where you are allowed to use third-party refillable products. In other words, you have refillable cartridges that can be actually reset, unlike us here in the U.S., and so therefore, you know, you are way ahead of us as far as luck compared to us. But let me tell you what can happen if you are not really careful. And a very, very well-known um, company owner just recently had this happen to him. R3000 basically ran out of ink because he failed to do this. It ran out of ink and got air in the ink lines. We'll discuss about how that can happen if you are not really super, super careful. Now, in the U.S., we can fill the R3000. We can refill the P600. We can refill the P400. There are cartridges for those printers, and they are able to be reset during the process, which involves having the chip declare itself empty. You will get an error message. You remove the cartridge. You fill it. You pop it back in, and the chip is reset back to full, and you're good to go. Not quite, not quite that easy. I'll tell you why. Now, I'm going to show you three different types of refillable cartridges. This is for the 3880, 3800, and P800 as well. Same style of cartridge. R3000, P600, same style of cartridge. And I believe this is for the, yeah, this is for the 2880. Again, same style of cartridge. Here's the catch. A OEM R3000 P600 cartridge and an OEM P800 and 3880 and so forth cartridge are different. The OEMs for the P800 and the 3880 have internal ink bags. And that ink bag takes up the whole internal space of this container. Let's call it a container. It can hold more ink than the chip is calibrated for. So the chip goes empty by whatever method and calculation that it uses, the printer that is, but you always have ink left in the bag, approximately 10 ml of ink. That bag will never collapse. If it collapses and causes an internal massive vacuum condition, you could damage your printer. So that's why they include an extra 10 ml of ink. That way the bag, even though it is declared empty by the chip, never really reaches that point of being absolutely empty. Same thing with these for the R3000 P600. Internally, there will always be ink left. And I know a lot of people get upset about that. Yeah, too bad. You have to have some ink left. Otherwise, you will introduce air into the ink lines. These are all stationary cartridge printers. They have a ribbon of lines bonded together for each color. They send ink to the printhead that way. You cannot have air entering those lines. They have to be full of ink. Now, here's what happens. And what a lot of people run into because they don't realize one very important thing. Internally, there is no ink bag. Remember, there are some walls and there are some compartments. This cartridge is compartmentalized. Okay, it has space for the ink to live in. 
It has support for the outer walls to not, you know, bow in and out because these cartridges are pressurized. And there are priming chambers built in. The priming chamber creates a sort of a siphon effect, just like when you suck fluid out of a hose and then it begins to flow automatically until you decide to raise the end above the level of that liquid. Well, the same thing is happening internally. So there's a lot of little walls, compartments that are taking up what? They're taking up space that would normally be occupied by ink. It's a long explanation for one thing. These cartridges do not hold the same volume of ink as an OEM cartridge, but the chip is calibrated for that. This cartridge does not hold the same amount of ink that an OEM cartridge holds, but the chip is calibrated for that. This cartridge, the same thing, I'm not gonna repeat it again. So the cartridges hold less ink than the chip is calibrated for. If you just simply count on the chip to, you know, tell you, hey, I'm empty, it's too late. You have been empty. You have been empty a while ago. And in a case of these two right here, that actually are stationary, you have now introduced air into the ink lines. Sorry, that is a huge problem. Cleaning cycle after cleaning cycle after cleaning cycle after cleaning cycle will not push air out of the ink lines. Only a full ink recharge procedure will solve that. And that uses up a lot of ink, folks. So again, keep that in mind. Do not rely on the chip. My PA-100 is running on refillable cartridges. How can I do that? Well, I have a chip decoder board and my firmware is an older one. I could have, of course, installed chipless firmware as well on it, but I'm still running on refillable cartridges that do not hold as much ink as the originals did. Okay, let's call it 80 ml. I can only pack 70 in those cartridges. So if I was to rely on a chip, I will run out of gas. I will run out of gas while my gas gauge still says I have gas. That's what's happening. So how to solve this? Get into the habit of taking a visual look at your cartridges. These are semi-transparent, as you can see. You can see the ink levels. And get into the habit of topping everything off back to full when they reach about half. Half is a good safety margin to, to be accustomed to, to conducting this you know, global retop or refill. Always do that and don't ever physically run out of ink just because the chip says you still have ink. It will fool you every single time. So you European guys out there with PA-100s that can run on refillable cartridges or I don't know, anything else that can run on refillable cartridges, be aware of that. Be aware that it will catch you and you will need to have some kind of tool, software that is, that will allow you to repeat that ink recharge. There's really no other way to push that air out. Even a deep cleaning sometimes does not quite do the job. So be aware of that. Just something that I wanted to bring up because several people and a very renowned person, like I said, this happened to them. This happened to them. And he realized it was because he got a little lazy there. And of course, that can happen to all of us. But be aware that the take-home message is refillable cartridges will not be able to reflect the actual amount of ink in the cartridges, okay? So before your bank account runs out, make sure you put money in it prior to that happening. Make sure you top off your gas tank before the gas gauge says you're very low. You might already be empty by that point. The same thing with these chips. The chips do not accurately report the physical amount of ink in those cartridges. So you gotta be a step ahead, okay? That'll be all for now. And again, thank you guys for all the support. You guys did not go away. You're still here backing me. And this is awesome because that just gives me the impetus to continue doing what we do here. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And as always, happy printing, everyone. And refilling. Bye-bye.